London, the world's largest city, is built firmly on a tradition that reaches back to the glories and triumphs of the Roman Empire. It was the Romans who built the first London Bridge where the present one stands today. Legend has it that in 1281, ice flows tore the bridge down and gave rise to the song known to children in every land, London Bridge is falling down. William the Conqueror built the Tower of London almost 1,000 years ago. And for many visitors, it is the first part of the city to see. But for some eminent Englishmen, it was the last. It was here that Sir Thomas More, Anne Boleyn, and others lost their heads. It is said that the British Empire will stand only so long as ravens are in the tower. And so, to avert disaster, a wing of each bird is clipped. It is guarded by yeoman wardens, commonly known as beef eaters, so named in Tudor days for their reputation as great meat eaters. Buckingham Palace, built in 1703, has been the permanent London residence of the Sovereign since the time of Queen Victoria. When the Sovereign is in residence, the royal standard flies at the masthead and the palace is guarded by sentries of the Brigade of Guards in full dress. The Sovereign's role in British government is a limited one. The Queen is a symbol linking England's past with the present. Probably the best polished door knocker in London belongs to 10 Downing Street. It has been the residence of England's Prime Ministers for the past 200 years. At the very heart of London stand the Houses of Parliament, more officially known as the Palace of Westminster, seat of the British lawmaking body. Flanked by the Bank of England and the Royal Exchange and marking the old border of London is the Griffin or City Dragon. When the Queen visits the city on state occasions, she must wait here until the Lord Mayor of London grants her permission to enter the city. In the days of wooden ships, England ruled the sea and Lord Nelson proved this at the Battle of Trafalgar. Trafalgar Square commemorates his great naval victory. Piccadilly Circus. Named for the necktie known as the Piccadilly. Fashionable young men of the 18th century who started the custom of meet me in Piccadilly. Fleet Street, named for the Lost River which once flowed through London, is one of the city's oldest streets and is believed to date back to the 13th century. It is now referred to as the Street of Ink, for it is the center of English journalism. Regent Street is London's chief shopping thoroughfare and is especially prized for its drapers, furriers and jewelers. But the Fifth Avenue of the British Isles is Bond Street, the street of quality. From china and leather goods to furs and books, here is an array of the best. And of course, there are those who come to shop. And alas, those who can only afford to window shop. Downtown shopping is no different than any other large city, except for the presence of the ever vigilant Bobbies. They enjoy a history of public service and courtesy. He'll answer any question, ranging from British history to where do you queue up for the bus? Queue up is British for stand in line. Leicester Square. These street entertainers, known as the Happy Wanderers, are merely trying to continue an old tradition, the traveling minstrel uh, for money. But authority isn't always for the minstrel on the street, especially when he seems to be disturbing the peace. But the bards of today are more fortunate, a waiting taxi and a clean getaway. Ah, uh, what Robin Hood wouldn't have given for that.
The right of free speech is a cornerstone of British democracy. And at Orator's Corner in Hyde Park, one can speak his mind about anything. It became the resort of popular orators in the 1860s. People liked the idea, and so today the topics range from astronomy to what's wrong with the government. And if no one wants to listen, why, you can just catch up on your reading. On a hot afternoon, the Serpentine Lake is the park's big attraction. But for some, the park is for relaxation, and the band concerts offer ample opportunity. Near the site of Charles I's execution stands the Cenotaph, commemorating the nation's glorious dead of the First and Second World Wars. St. Paul's Cathedral, the Duke of Wellington and Lord Nelson are buried here. One of the most colorful ceremonies in the world is the Queen's Birthday Parade, or as Londoners say, Trooping of the Colors. wears the scarlet tunic and insignia of Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment. Once, the colors served a tactical use. They were a rallying point, encouraging the troops in battle. Like much of the past, what was once necessity is now a ceremony. The foremost national shrine is Westminster Abbey, where Britain's great are buried. Names that have become part of the living history of London, the cornerstone of Britain.